Okay, let me see. I think now we are recording. Yes. Okay, see, so yeah, in previous classes, we were using the Newton method to solve only two equations. Remember, we have two equations and they were very easy to solve. We actually developed a spreadsheet to, to, de to develop the solution to, and, and then we only limited our, our analysis to two equations. But what happened if we have more than more than two equations, more than two linear equations, non-linear equations? Remember that we here we have to make the distinction. We had linear mode, linear linear systems, and they were actually solved by the Gaussian methods. We use the Gaussian, we use the LU factorization, we use the PAL factorization, then we use iterative methods, we use um, the, the Jacobi method, we use the, um, what was the other one, the SOAR method. So, and those were actually iterative methods. And additionally, we use the Newton method, but we use it for only one equation. So, and then we move to nonlinear equations. When we move to nonlinear equations, we cannot solve it directly. So nonlinear equations, for example, as the ones in the exercises, so we are limited because they, are, they, they could be transcendental, they could be also algebraic, but then they are nonlinear equations. So the solution requires more, more than the Gaussian elimination. If you apply Gaussian elimination to one nonlinear system of equation, you'll see that you're going to get an error. So you can try actually adding Matlab and you see that they are actually singular matrices. So that's the problem. So when we have the Newton method in general to solve equations, what we do is to make this more, more extensive to nonlinear systems. And you can have several equations. You can have three, four, a hundred, a thousand, or even a million of equations. And this is going to be working perfectly. So in this case, we gonna remember something about the, the other classes. So in previous classes, we studied methods for solving one equation or one system of equation in, in, and one unknown. Usually these equations, remember in the exercises, they were nonlinear. So they are nonlinear. However, for this, for, for, for these uh, classes, we only studied what? Linear system of equations by the Gaussian elimination and they require to be linear. So that's a limitation of the Gaussian elimination. However, we will be using Gaussian elimination again because once we, comp once we understand the Newton method, we'll see that we can adequate the method to, be, to solve this type of, um, of systems. Thank you. And then we are going to actually be using the combination of nonlinear and more than one equation to actually um, de increase the degrees of the difficulty. And we will describe how the, this, how the Newton method actually um, account for this type of um, systems. There is actually a good phrase that I just Type here, I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. So the madness of people is very difficult to calculate. So be aware of that in your life. So coming back to the basic of the Newton method. Remember in the Newton method, we have one with only one variable. We had this equation. See, this was the xi plus one or k plus one equal to xi or xk minus the uh, the, uh, the division of the function div divided by its derivative. That was the initial, the initial function of the model. Okay, so, and this is going to be the outline for the new multivariate Newton's method. So this is going to be the basic for our method. So bo both are going to be derived from the linear approximation afforded by the Taylor expansion. Remember that this is the Taylor expansion. We, did, we saw it in the previous class, and if we go back in time, we, we remember that the, the Newton method was actually derived from the series from, of Taylor, Taylor's series. Okay, 
For example, we can actually assume that now the function is actually a function of three different variables, u, v, and w. And then we have the same function f u, u, v, w, f u, w for the three equations. And these three equations are nonlinear and they have three unknowns. Okay, that's the difficulty because they, even they actually are three by three in a, in a matrix, in a tabular form, as we saw before, in general, they are not linear. So that increases the difficulty to solve, to solve the system. So here we're gonna present, present something. So we are gonna define a vector value function f. And this vector function is, gonna, is going to include the function one, function two and function three, these three functions. So it's gonna be in general, something like a matrix, but it's not, not only the coefficient, it's the entire for the, the entire equation, okay? And then denote the previous system by fx equal to zero, where x is equal to u, v and w, which is this one. So exactly this one. So the analogy of the derivative f in the newton raphson method, which is this one, in one variable, our uh, case is the Jacobian matrix. So when we have more than one variable here, so we have to compute something that we call the Jacobian. And the Jacobian is actually very straightforward because the Jacobian is only the first function. Each of the elements of the, of the first row are the derivatives of the function with respect to u, v, and w respectively. So if we have a function with three unknowns, so we have to derive it once with respect to each of these variables, and that's gonna be the first row. The same for the function number two, and the same for the function number three. So that's what we call the Jacobian. It's a very straightforward method, and the ones that are from civil engineering, these are gonna be actually recalled in, um, open channel hydraulics. So, so um, como se llaman? Um, tuberías y canales. Creo que se llama la materia en tuberías y canales. So you're going to be using this in tuberías y canales. So be aware of this. So the Taylor expansion for vector value functions around X0, the Taylor expansion as we did it for the method for this matter, Newton method, remember it's actually the same thing. So fx equal to the fx zero, which is the fx zero here we have it. Plus, in this case, we don't have the derivative, but we have the Jacobian. So because we have the Jacobian, we have the Jacobian in here, evaluated in the x zero, which is the initial value, times x minus, x minus the initial value, plus, in this case, a function o, that include a second degree term, okay? So there's gonna be a second degree term. This is actually the third term of the Taylor expansion, okay? But it sounds like it's gonna be more difficult, but it won't be actually, because we are gonna do something like it's gonna linearize this expression. So for example, the linear expansion of this function, if you think about it, so this is one function, this is the this is the well this is actually the val vector value function this is a vector value function so we have that u is equal to the first equation e u plus b and v is equal to sinus of u so these are two different equations and around the initial value x0 comma x0 okay so the first value the first value that we need to, to, to see. So the function evaluated in the initial value. So how much is if I evaluate E, U plus B evaluating in these two values? How much is this? How much is this? Evaluating E, U, más B, en los términos B, U igual a cero y B igual a cero. How much is that one? Uno. 
yes, it's one right here. And then evaluate sinus of u in zero. Zero. Exactly. So then we have we know how to obtain this one, right? That's gonna be if it, that's gonna be the first one. Okay. So now we need the Jacobian. So the Jacobian of this function. So compute the derivative of this function with respect to u. Calculen la, la, deri la derivada de la función con respecto a u. ¿Cuánto da? Eso es cálculo básico, ¿eh? Arriba de E a la U más B. Pues a mí me da E a la U más U, B a la U más B, así. ¿Más I? Ma, así, o sea, así, 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 así. O sea, E a la U más, o sea, lo mismo, o sea, a mí me da lo mismo, no sé. So, we, 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 have, we have to actually differentiate this one with respect to this value. So, if you actually derive this one, it, this is a constant. So, you're going to have, if this is a constant, so the derivative of this one is going to be equal to u, right? So, it's going to be exactly the same thing, but it's going to be evaluated in zero and zero. So, it's going to be e a la zero. So, if we want to actually make this straightforward for the ones that are not very well calculus, for example, no se la compliquen. A veces, muchachos, hay que utilizar la tecnología. Yo sé que algunos no llevaron, no llevaron cálculos, pero, bueno, bueno, siempre sí llevaron, pero por algún motivo no aprendieron, ¿no? Pero eso es muy, muy, muy independiente, ¿no? Entonces, si decimos que es en este caso, eh, vamos a decir que es e a la, e a la u, e a la u más b. Lo estoy haciendo aquí porque es más difícil, es más difícil hacerlo lógicamente. Pizarrón es muy difícil. No tengo pizarrón, pero bueno. Ok. So, so here. So if you go, if you go to so if you go to Wolfram Math Mathematical, so this is actually a very nice, I love this big website because it makes my life easier, especially when I'm writing. So for the approximate, the derivative of e a la e, e, e u plus b is equal to e a la e u plus b. So uh, Perez Calderon was right. I think it was Perez Calderon. Yeah, was right. We saying that this is exactly the same. So if you actually evaluate the function then as the same, so it's gonna be, Zero and zero. Zero plus zero is equal to zero, right? So E L is zero. So and then the derivative of this one with respect to with respect to, for example, to V, we all know that this is interchangeable. So if you actually make this make makes makes the other way around, so in this case, what's with respect to you? But if I think if I compute derivative, if I say der 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 derivative. I think it's with respect to V. I believe that this is what we're going to get. I believe, not sure though. No. No, hold on. So derivative. No, in this case, there's going to be, well, it's going to be the same. It's just. I'm just gonna actually just say like u plus u plus b. So I'm just it's this is under, this is interchangeable. You see that this is exactly the same as saying if this is u plus b, it's the same as b plus u. I'm assuming if I say u plus u, b plus u, the first term that that is gonna get is actually v. So well, no, actually no, but it's gonna be the same. Don't worry, just trust me. So it's gonna be the same thing. Okay, so we will have the same thing. And then, oops. And then because we want to have the same thing, so we just need to actually say that E 
zero plus zero is equal to equal to equal to zero, and then we have zero. So we're gonna go to the second line of the of the Jacobian. So derivative of this with respect to u. So what is the derivative with respect to u? Derivada de seno de u. Menos seno. Seno. Coseno. Coseno de u. Coseno de u. O menos coseno de u. Menos coseno. Menos seno. Menos coseno. It's positive? Positivo. Es coseno, sí, positivo. Okay, so it's cosine is zero. And then, of course, the derivative of this one with respect to V is equal to zero because we don't have V here. So now we have the Jacobian. So did you get how, how we get this? ¿Entendieron cómo obtuve el Jacobian? ¿Sí entendieron? No, that was a no or that was a yes. Sí, profe, primero pues hizo la derivada de cada una y las fue colocando, ¿no? Exactly. Este, con respecto, por ejemplo, a U y luego con respecto a B, ¿no? Así es, con respecto a U, con respecto a B, de la primera función. Con respecto a U, con respecto a B, de la segunda función. That's, that's how it, it was done. So... Here we have u and b, of course, because we have this, we have this vector, which is this one. We have this vector, u and v, which is pretty much the same. And then plus, we have the function, this one. Right? So because this one was, if it's u and v, u and v, u minus 0, minus 0, so the k gets the same. And then we got plus x0 squared, so this is 0, x0 squared, so we don't have any problem, right? So, and this would be actually the linear expansion of the, this, ve uh, of this vector value function. So, so far so good, right? We are, in this case, we are good, right? So, as usually, the Newton method is based on a linear approximation. So, if we space under a linear approximation, we just ignore this term. Right? We just ignore it because we're saying that the linear, remember, the Newton method is based on a linear approximation. So we don't care about this one. So we can neglect it. So say bye bye, ciao. We don't want you. So, as in the one dimensional case, so in this case, we, in instead of x, we're going to have r. Why? Because r is always is, uh, symbolized as the root of the function. So, and let x to be the current guess. So X is this is going to be the current guess, the initial guess. So then if we ignore this one, we're just going to get that in this case, the F with the root, which is equal to zero, is going to be approximately equal to the function evaluated in the initial values plus the Jacobian times R, which is the current value X zero, in this case, minus X zero, well, the current root actually minus x0 which is the initial value okay so that would be that would be actually what we have to do so in generally we just want to solve this numerically so we just have to this is this is this could be actually take to to this side so to this side of the equation of the equation and then this is going to get negative and then this is going to be negative, get negative here. And then we just actually divided this one to so this it's over this one. But the division in matrix operations it doesn't exist. So there, is, there are no division. So we have to actually compute the inverse, right? The division in the matrix notation is actually the inverse of the, of the, of the Jacobian. So and that's how it, how, how it is done. So we just compute the in the the, the inverse, and then this is going to be equal to R minus X zero. Remember, once that this becomes zero, it means like we are very close to the solution of the function. That's going to be just what we're going to be solving. So we're going to actually solve uh, for, for an approximation of the root um, by solving for R. So we're just going to keep solving and solving and solving and solving as in the newton raphson method. It's exactly the same. So a more general definition, so we have the initial vector x zero, this is an initial vector, and then the vector 
the future vector of the next iteration is going to be equal to x k, which is going to be actually the initial one in the first step, minus the Jacobian, the inverse of the Jacobian. Here we have it, times the function evaluated in the fx, which is actually what we have here. So it's the same thing. And this is going to be repeated for infinite number of operations. Okay, so there is something about the inverse. When we are solving, for example, two by two system, three by two system, a five by five, 10 by 10, it's very easy to, 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 to be done in MATLAB. Very easy. But when you're solving something like a, a building or a huge structure or a huge circuit, because it's also used for circuit analysis for, the, for those that are working in electrical engineering. So it becomes very tedious or very burdensome, computationally speaking, of course. So we have to use a trick to avoid this. So instead of actually compute the inverse, what we have to do on each step, instead of following the preceding definition, which is this one, Literally, we have to set equal to x k plus one equals to x k minus s. Right? So, and you say like, oh, professor, okay, wait a second. What is this? So x k plus one is the one that we're looking for. x k is the one that we are solving for the current iteration. But you can say, professor, what, what's s? So, well, s is actually the solution of the Jacobian times the vector s equal to fx, which is the function evaluated in the value of xk. So, and that would be solved, that could be solved by what? By the Gaussian elimination. And we have now that once we actually carry out this operation, we don't have to compute the inverse because we're solving first for s, and then one we have s, we just need to actually compute xk plus one just by subtracting a vector operation, which is xk minus s, because this is going to be a vector. That's going to be, it's a very simple uh, step, and we don't have to carry out the inverse because it's kind of tedious computationally speaking. You cannot see it because if you actually, you open MATLAB, for example, so if you open MATLAB, I'm going to open MATLAB for you to see this part. It's opening. Give it a second. It's loading, so my computer is kind of slow. That's why I hate Windows, but try to understand my frustration. So I'm going to go to iCloud. Well, actually, I don't need to actually go to iCloud so far because I'm, we're just going to demonstrate. So in MATLAB, if you want to do, for example, a, a system, a very simple system, so we just say like one, two, Three and four. This is a matrix, right? And to compute the inverse in MATLAB, we just say in of ants. Yeah, you know, we get this was done, boom, very easy. Very, very easy. So it was say something like one, probably I think one divided by ants. Oh no. no. I have to actually find this one again. Let me just call this one A. A is equal to, so this is A, so I can compute one divided by A. Oh, sorry, no, it, this wasn't the one. So where is the other, it was like, it's, it's one divided by, I think it was by this one. There you go, so so it's the other one. It's a, it's a forward slash. So it's the same thing. So you have this one here, so and it's, it's like having this. So 
this is something that we have to understand that instead of just using this term, this is using this, we can use the back slash, the forward slash, sorry to do this. So in general, if we want to solve a system of equations such as the ones that we had before, so I can go and open something like, let me just go to, let me go to, oh, where is numerical analysis? So we have numerical analysis and we have the scripts, I think. And we have this one, yeah. So in general, we have this one and it's a three by three system, right? So we have a three by three system. I want to clear the screen. I mean, instead of doing this, I can actually do it with my, so this is actually, this is A. So A is equal to this matrix and B is equal to this. Right? So B is equal to this. So what we can do, if you, if you remember, it's equal to AX equal to B. This, this is the term, this is the, this is what we had in general, right? The, the form of the vector. So what we do is just to solve this by Gaussian elimination. However, instead of doing so, I can say that X is equal to B times the inverse of A. No, no, A in lowercase. Oh. Hold on. So times B. So that's that's the solution. 0 0.45, 0 0.66, and then I'm gonna round it. Just remember this. Remember this 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 solution. Okay. I'm actually uh, yeah. I'm gonna run it. So we have the solution. 0 0.4, 5, 0 0.65, and 0 0.25. So we solve it just by using this one. You see? So it was a very, it, it, it sounds like it's actually straightforward. It, it's easier doing this, right? Because this is just inverse of A times B. It's easier, but in general, if we want to do a code like this to solve the inverse, it's gonna be a lot of work. That's how you solve. You remember the Sarus procedure, the model modelo de Sarus that they used to calculate the inverse. Remember? In algebra lineal, all that part was what they used to do to make the determination and determinant and all that stuff to calculate the inverse. So it's a show to do all that, right? So MATLAB does it in a command, but when it becomes something very, very large, it takes a lot of time. For example, if we wanted to do this quickly, I think we can do it quickly. Let's see if we 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 do it quickly. Oh, uh, hold on. No, no, B, B divided by A, sorry. That's why it doesn't actually. There you go, there you go. You see, if you actually do it like this, you get the values, but they're not the same as this one. Because it's, this is actually not correct to have to do it. You get the same sign, you get something very like similar, but it's not the same. Because in general, it's actually tedious. So if we do something like if we do something like this, of course, it's gonna be something wrong because we don't we don't we don't actually it's just dividing by all the terms. So this is something that we have to avoid the use of this tool in MATLAB and this tool in MATLAB. This is very useful because it sounds like it's all oh, okay, it's fine, but it's not that fine because it's a lot of work. For example, if I say something like, well, it's going to be very difficult to, to actually make a, okay, zeros, zeros of a thousand, thousand by thousand, plus 
a friend of a thousand. So let me see if I can actually formulate the vector like this. So it, this is this is new for me because. So there you go. So this is a matrix of a thousand by a thousand. So it's a it's a, a thousand by a thousand matrix. So you can see it here. So this is equal to it was equal to what? To B. So B it's a, it's a huge matrix. So this is B. You see, so very huge matrix. So if we do it like this, for example, let's just say that we calculate C is going to be the inverse of B. So look, takes a lot of time to do it. So that's that's the inconvenience of actually do this. This is the inverse. It takes a lot of work to do it. So be aware of these operations because this is how we optimize the problem when we're doing coding. OK, so but let's go back to the presentation. That's why we are avoiding actually to compute the inverse because it's actually computational burdensome. So what we're going to do is then to actually set x k plus one equals to k x k minus s where x is going to be the solution of the Jacobian times s equal to fxk, which is very straightforward, and we can do it with the, with the, with the MATLAB, sorry, with the code that we already developed, okay? So in general, the, the, Newton, the iteration step for multivariate Newton method is just to solve this one for s and then just add this to the previous value, or the current values of xk. To obtain the new iteration. So, but this is going to be more understandable if we actually do it in, in MATLAB. So, let, this is the example number one. So, use the Newton method with the starting guess of one and two to find the solution of the system. So, you see that this is the solution. So, I'm going to ask you something, for example. Um, ¿Cuál sería la solución de este? A ver, déme la solución de este sistema a mano. Le pregunto a la vez pasada que vimos el método de, de Newton para, do, para dos ecuaciones, me dieron la, la solución muy rápida. ¿Cuál sería la solución? Sin calculadora, ese, ¿no? Pues qué chiste tiene. ¿Cómo lo harían a mano? Despejaría U en la primera ecuación. A ver, traten de hacerlo. Traten de hacerlo. Veamos si es tan fácil como, como lo dicen. Y me dan las soluciones. Aquí tengo yo mi libreta para anotar las soluciones. No se preocupen. Porque están de acuerdo que si eso es muy fácil, ¿para qué hacemos el método de Newton, no? So is that easy?
doesn't seem to be that easy, right? Pérez Calderón, ¿qué dices? ¿Sí de fácil Parece, es? pero no. Este, a ver, ¿qué, qué, ya, a ver, déme un minutito más, a ver. <laughs> okay, one minute, one more minute. Se ve sencillo, pero está tedioso. Exactly. So if you think about it, if, and if you see the, if you see actually the, the plots, so we'll see that the first actually is a cubic, a cubic equation, and the second one is a circle. That's the equation of a circle, u squared plus v squared equal to one. So it's a circle with diameter equal to one. And then the other one is just the equation that I like, it's just passing through the circle. So we have two solutions and the solutions are, I would say like graphically, we have like point, something like 0.8, right? 0.8 something, point, close to 0.8. So those are the solutions because I remember that these are the solutions, right? So I would say like this, those are the solutions, but I don't know. Let's wait. Calderon has already 30 seconds come soon, so he has another 30 seconds. No, professor, pues, ya enséñame el método de Newton, porque no voy a... <laughs> Yeah, so in no, si es el, a lo mejor si es funcional, no, pero es que hay que hacer un montón de cosas, entonces es muy largo, o sea, a exactly. pesar de que está chiquitito, es muy, muy largo. O sea, sí, ya viste, si tiene solución así, por comenzó la compañía, el método de sustitución, ¿no? Que es el, el más rápido, el, supuestamente el más rápido, pero no, si se hace un, un, un enredo. Exactly. Aquí. Yeah, 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 I, I totally understand. That's why we are using actually the, the this is a non-linear system. That's why it's taking our time because it's not linear. So, but it doesn't matter. That's why we're actually taking this class. So we by graphically graphically we know that we have these two these two points and they are very close to point eight. That's what we can say so far, right? Because that's that's the how we can plot in MATLAB. You you already know how to plot in MATLAB, so I'm assuming that you don't have any problem. So what we have to do then is actually identify the two functions. The two, this is the first function f1, this is the one, and this is the second function f2, right? So, and we are gonna do the steps we follow here. We have to do exactly the same things. We have to obtain the Jacobi. So what do, how, how do we do it? So we obtain the Jacobian. So we have to obtain the Jacobian by deriving the system. So we have that B, plus u square, so cubic u, sorry. And then we have u square plus b square minus one equal to zero. So if we want to obtain the Jacobian, so give me the, for the first equation, the equation number one, give me the derivative with respect to u. With respect to u. So this is the, this, this is the, this is the equation. Give me the derivative with respect to u. It's three u square, right? Minus three u square. So minus three u square. And then give me the derivative of this equation with respect to v. It's gonna be equal to one. Equal to one. Same thing, but for the second equation. So give me the derivative of this equation with respect to u. Is going to be to you, to you, to you, and give me the derivative of this equation with respect to v. V is going to be to v squared to to v. So this is the Jacobian. Do you agree? Do you agree or not? Is that correct? Sí, sí, está bien. Yeah. So it's, it's actually very straightforward. So, and then remember that the Jacobian is asking us to actually evaluate the Jacobian in the initial values. So the Jacobian in the initial values, we said like the values is equal to one and two. So this is U, this is V. 
So evaluate the Jacobian. So the Jacobian U is equal to, in this case, U is equal to one. So this is gonna be minus three. The Jacobian here is equal to one. So it doesn't change. Here is equal to one. It's gonna be two. And here B is equal to two. So the Jacobian is gonna be two, two, and it's gonna be four, right? And then we have to assume that we're gonna solve for S. So this, this system, right? So we're gonna solve the Jacobian time S times the function evaluated in the initial values. So we have S1 and S2, and this is gonna be equal to, check this out. So we have, let's evaluate the, the function. So evaluate this function in the initial values. How much is this? This is U and this is V. How much is that? It's two minus one, right? It's equal to one. And then in the other one, it's actually one plus two squared, which is four minus one. And then we have equal to zero. And then you, we have that is equal to one and four, right? Correcto, profe. Exactly. So thank you very much. I'm sure. Um, I must, sí, so, we, okay. sí, sí. so we're solving one and four. Okay. I forgot a negative. No? What? Pero eso le iba a preguntar por qué el valor negativo. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that. So in this case, if you if you think if if you don't see here is because I forgot the sign. So here is okay. But here I didn't actually put it. You see here? It's negative. But here I made a mistake here in the in the slide. But here is correct. O sea, siempre va a ser negativo. Yes. It's negative. Yeah, ah, aquí en la diapositiva se equivocó. Yeah, yeah. In this, in this, ah, I, okay. I made a mistake. Yeah, but okay. here is fine. Okay, okay, stay in, stay in. Yeah. Made a mistake. I'm actually here. If you think about it, it's negative. So that's why we have it here. So it's negative, but I made a mistake here. So that's why we put the negative sign. And then we can actually use the we, we can actually use the code that we developed for the Gaussian elimination in Eminus, right? Sorry, that we share in Eminus. I think I shared this in Eminus. ¿Se acuerdan el código que les puse que se llamaba G? ¿Qué es este? ¿Se acuerdan? Se los compartí. Practically, we can actually use that one, but we have to do a little bit of modification. So I already modified the code. So in general, so I did this. In general, U and V, U and V are equal to one and two, right? Because, because those were my initial values, one and two, right? So one and two. And then I'm saying that I want 10 iterations. And I'm saying that I'm going to create a matrix that is going to be zero in this case, number of iterations times three. Why? Because I need to store my results. Why is three? Because one is going to have actually the number of iterations, the second one is going to have U, and the, the third one is going to have V. That's why it's modified to number of iterations, comma three. We have three columns. The first columns, again, the first one, it's equal to the number of iterations. The second column is the values of U, and the third column is the values, the values of B. Okay? So, and then, inside of my iterations, I create a vector A and B. A and B is going to be actually um, the values of the Jacobian and the values of B. So if you remember the Jacobian were, the Jacobian were three U square U one and two U two V. So three minus three U square one, two U two V. 
So it's exactly what I have here in my Jacobian. And then V, as I said, V, it was equal to the functions. So the functions were equal to V minus U square. V minus U square, and then U square plus U plus V square minus one, and V minus U square, U square plus V square minus one. This is my V. And then of course, the number of unknowns are equal to two because I need to solve for U and V. And then I solve using the exactly the same procedure I'm using for the Gaussian elimination. The same procedure. It's exactly the same. So look at this. It's exactly the same. So this is the, the, exactly the same code I'm using here. Why? Because I want to solve by Gaussian elimination. I don't explain this part of the code because you already know the process of the code. Because this was one of the not the very first classes, but the, 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 the thing like the fifth class or sixth class. So you already know how to do it. This is the substitution. And then once I have the results, of course, for my first iteration, for my first iteration, I would say like that the first is my S. My S, remember, is my number of iteration S. The second one is U and the third one is V. And then this is important, this part. So once we have, if you go, if we go to the slides, so remember that the second step is actually a K plus one is equal to X K plus S. So here in the MATLAB code, we have that U is equal to the current value of U plus X one. And then the current value of V plus X two. What is the X1 and X2? Of course, they are the solutions of the current step or the solution that I obtained by solving this system by the Gaussian elimination. So is the solution of S, this S value. That's why I'm adding this to the MATLAB code. So I'm going to make the 10 iterations to show you. And then boom. So we have that. The first iterations, they give me one and two, one and one, and then you start to actually have convergency. And we see that for the fifth iteration, I think it was the fifth iteration. Yes, so the fifth iteration, we have convergency for four decimal places, right? So in general, instead of five iteration, 10 iteration, I could do five. So I could do five, and then I got the right numbers. So this is what we did in the exercises right here. So we see that after the third solution, it's important to understand that X1 is equal to this, I told you. OK, and that the solution of X0 and 1 is equal to the solution of the MATLAB code, which is actually the solution that we obtain here by using the Gaussian elimination, OK? So be aware of that because it's very important. So if you want to actually do it like right here, for example, you want to do this step that we did in the, in the class. So this one, you have the solution for S. We can use the first, the first GA, GA, the GE value. So what you have to do is just to, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to open the, the two by two and then comment this out. And open the two by two B and then I'm going to change the number of unknowns equal to two. And then the, the vector was equal to minus three, minus three, one, two and four. And the vector solution was equal to minus one, minus four, because we have to include the negative sign. And then I solve it, and then the solution was zero and one. 
And if you go to this part, this is zero and minus one, which was the solution of the applying of the uh, Gaussian elimination script. So this is the solution. And this is the, how you get actually the Gaussian elimination. So, but in my case, I just invented one strategy to actually make this easier by adding a new CX cycle four for the number of iterations in using J. Jacobian and then solving by using the Gaussian elimination. Okay, so that's what I did ex exactly here. So it's actually a very kind of nice um, script. And this is how we solve it. So the solution is equal to this at the, at the end, 0.826 and 0.536. So lo que quiero que me hagan es que me sustituyan estos valores, 0.8260, y punto 56.36 en esta ecuación. Profe, punto 82.60 sería U. U en B, exactamente. Sí, la primera es U y la primera segunda es B. Ok. U en B. Quiero que me lo sustituyan en esta ecuación, en la inicial. Bueno, ahí me da 4.024 por 10 a la menos 5. So that's very close to zero, right? So it's ah, not... Okay, sí, cero, sí, cero, cero. Okay. Yeah, it's very close to zero. So that's a that's a sub approximation because remember this is an approximation of the solution. So now we we actually find that the solution is correct. So that's fine. But let's do another example to actually get this straight forward. So now we have the Newton's method to obtain the following um, solution. So now I, I can tell you. So now you have that U and V is equal to 2 and 2, the initial values. Ahora les pregunto, ¿será que pueden ustedes obtener esto a mano? Así la solución. ¿Será que pueden? No creo. <laughs> so maybe yes, maybe I mean there are people that are so good in algebra, right? And then they could do, you know, all what all what they can to obtain the solution. However, we see that this is actually a third order equation, so it's not that easy now. So what we have to do now, and it's very nonlinear if you think about it, because you even have actually an interaction term. We have u and v, so it's going to be more complicated to to solve it. So the same thing we're going to do here. So exactly the same. So what do we do? It's ob ob we obtain the Jacobian. So what's what's the what's the, the derivative of this with respect to u? What's the derivative of this with respect to u? El primero sería este 18u al cuadrado, ¿no? Más b menos uh -huh. eh, 9b al... Ah, no, es respecto a u, ¿verdad? Sí. Ah, es el, el tercer término, pues se elimina 0, 0. Sí, nada más Exacto. quedaría 18u al cuadrado más b. Es lo en el primer, la primera Exacto. cosa. Exacto. Ahora respecto a b, ¿cuánto da? U menos... Pues sería U por menos 9 al, a, por B al cuadrado. Exactly. So now we go to the, with, the, with the second equation. So what's the derivative of this equation, the second equation, with respect to U? Con respecto a u, sería 2u menos 18b al cuadrado. A ver si quedaría. Exactly. So, and then res, res, with respect to v.
pues sería menos 36 por B más eh, 48B al cuadrado. Exactly. So now we have the Jacobian. This is the Jacobian. So that's what we get from obtaining, applying this concept, the Jacobian. So this is very important for you because you, you're going to use this one later. So now we actually have to evaluate the function with in these points. Evalúen, por favor, las funciones con, con estos in, puntos iniciales, dos y dos. Evalúen las funciones. Profe, la función 1 me da 24. Ok, 24, and then the following, the second La función 2 da menos 11. Ok, 24 and minus 11. So let's go and see if that works. Oh, I don't have, oh, ooh, ooh, I don't have solution. So, no, I don't have the solution. Oh, my goodness. Ok, let's, let's just do it. Don't, doesn't matter. We can do this very easily. So, If you think about it, so we need the Jacobian times S equal to 24 and 11. So let's just do it. Let's go and use MATLAB. I prepare my exercises. You see, I'm not that, you know, that silly. So you can see here that I have this one. It's going to be, okay, wait a second. I said, what was the initial values? They were two and two, right? Two and two. So two and two. Two and two. I'm going to just confirm what you said. Oops. So I two and two. And then I'm going to evaluate the first one. I think, yeah, I'm going to evaluate the first one here. 24. You're correct. And then the following, 11, minus 11. So thank you very much. It was correct. So now we can solve for, for S, right? So now we can solve for S because we have everything in the Jacobian. So now please evaluate the Jacobian con estos valores. Dos, dos, evalúen ese Jacobian. Y me dicen los valores. Le voy a pedir a Bernardo, a Arturo Montoya, a Evayaret y a Tolentino Esperanza. Uno cada uno. En el orden que se los di, me lo den, por favor. ¿Ok? Permítanme un segundo. ¿Qué tal, Juan? Bien, Joseph, ¿estás ocupado? Estoy en clase, Juan. Ah, bueno, no, entonces apenas podrás me das una señal para que charlemos, que si sí conseguimos la plata. Ok, perfecto, entonces te hablo cuando termine mi clase, ¿vale? Perfecto, dale, listo. Sale, chao, chao. Chao. Okay. ok, so Bernardo, Montoya, Eva y Esperanza. So, Yuki, Bernardo, ¿me vas a dar el 18U cuadrada más B? Me dio 74. 74. Montoya, ¿me vas a dar el U menos 9B cuadrada? Me dio menos 34. Menos 34. Eva, ¿me tienes que dar la, el 2U menos 18B cuadrada? Menos 68. Okay. Y por último, Tolentino Esperanza, me tienes que dar al menos 36V más, más 48B cuadrada. 48. 48. Ok. Let's just check that out. So, 
we can check this out very easily in MATLAB. So the first one, seventy four. Correct. The second one, minus thirty four. Correct. The, th the third one is equal to minus sixty eight. Correct. And lastly, we have. 48, so correct. So we now have actually everything we need to do to evaluate the system, the system at, in this form. Remember, in this form. So now we have the matrix already. We have S and we have the vector. So the matrix is actually 74 minus 34, 68, minus 68, 48. And the vector on the outside is actually minus which is negative, and inside the bin, inside of the, the bracket is 24 and minus 11. So, and we can do this in MATLAB. Okay, so let's just do it. So we initial values two and two, and then run. So we start with the values equal to two, 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 two and then we have the convergence equal to one, one. After the fifth iteration is equal to one one. Okay, so qué pasa si tuvimos uno y uno aquí? Sustituyen uno y uno en este en esta en esta ecuación. ¿Cuánto les da? Sería seis más uno menos tres menos cuatro. Está cero. Sí. Lo mismo acá a ver. Supongo que acá no uno menos dieciocho más seis más uno seis más uno sí dieciocho ocho cero. Se confirma, ¿cierto? Entonces la ecuación es cero. Sin embargo, les voy a pedir, por favor, que cambiemos en este caso las ahora. ¿Qué pasaría si damos una solución inicial de punto 1 a punto 1? Entonces, punto 1. Punto 1. Ya corroboramos que nos da los valores, ¿no? Que sí nos da una solución. Entonces, si le pongo punto 1, lo corro, ¡pum! Y miren, me cambia, me queda, me queda una solución que dice menos, menos 0.88, no, perdón, no sé, no, es punto 88, 68 y menos 29.40. No, 20, punto 29.40, perdón, menos, 20, menos punto 29.40. Ahora sustituyan esta, estos valores en la ecuación original, por favor. La ecuación original está aquí. Sustituyen esos valores. Profe, la primera me dio punto 15. Bueno, menos punto 15. Uh -huh, a ver, la segunda. Dos punto setenta y cinco. Dos punto setenta y cinco. 
Sí, profe. ¿Seguros? Bueno, la verdad no estoy seguro, lo hice confundiendo. Recuerden que, recuerden que U es punto .8868 y B es ah, igual a menos. .88. Sí, punto .8868. Yo veía ceros, no sé cómo. No, 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 okay, punto, okay. Sí, profe, ya vi mi error, disculpe. Y chécalo bien. También el primero me da menos 1.2975. ¿Con punto 8868? Sí. A ver, vamos a confirmarlo. Si no, ya estoy mal yo, entonces. A mí me da menos 1.29 por 10 a la menos 4. Exacto. La primera sí. y la segunda. A mí la segunda me da 9.328 por 10 a la menos 5. Exactly. So that's, those are the solutions. So they're very close to zero. So, ¿qué me quiere decir eso? Who, who, what's the meaning of this? So they were actually, they were actually two, different, two, sol two solutions. But what graphically we can say that we also have what? We have two different solutions for this system. And of course, it's, the, it's gonna depend on the initial value that you provide to obtain the solutions, okay? So that's what, what, that's what we mean when we say it. So if you are closer, if you give two, two and two, you're closer to one. If you're closer to, to for example, to 2.8868 and then minus 29, so you're closer to this solution. So it's gonna have the convergency to that solution. So this, this is the, this is the, This could be a, a drawback, but it's not in general a drawback. It's actually something very useful because if you plot the equations beforehand, so you'll see the solution. So you can provide a similar solution or a very close solution to the system and you can obtain the different routes. Okay, that's one of the advantages of the newton raphson method, but it could be seen sometimes for a, as a drawback, but it's not a drawback just need to implement more knowledge. So you have to plot, you have to see, and then you obtain a more accurate solution using the neutron Raphson method. Hasta aquí, ¿ustedes entend han entendido bien? Sí, profe, más que nada es como sustitución, por así decirlo. Exactly, yeah. If you want to see it like that, that's, that's, that's why we, we, we are using numerical analysis is just like that, you know? And giving you tools to do things easier. So and we have the computer. Numerical analysis is like computer science because you have the computer to obtain all this. Okay. So uh, third example and the last example. So it's going to be very similar to to the others. So but now we have a three by three um, system. So we have three equations and we have three unknowns. So we'll see that these are nonlinear, and it's going to be very difficult to actually obtain to obtain um, these by hand, right? It's going to be a lot of work. Que digo que si no usamos la computadora, pila, pailas, esto esto se se prolongó. Por eso es numerical analysis está muy está muy completo en cuestiones de de, de es como un conjunto. Te, te da las herramientas para que cuando ustedes vayan a otros niveles prácticamente puedan ocupar todo esto y puedan llegar más rápido a una solución. ¿Ok? Entonces, esto es la funcionalidad de un análisis. 
el profesor que quiera darles este sistema y el día que lo hagan a mano, se van a llevar más haciendo esto a mano que propiamente haciendo la, lo que están viendo en la clase. Es la realidad. That's why we need the computer. That's why we need to evolve in this, in this class, in this university, in reality, actually. So, the example number three says, use Newton's method to find the solution of the system using the starting point, x0, u0, z0, 1, 2, 3. So, we have these initial values and we have this system. This is the Jacobian matrix. If we, there, if we have the derivative of this with respect to x, this is only three. With respect to y, this is going to be, in this general, the derivative for this one is going to be minus, minus sinus is going to be positive z sinus of g. And then if you want to compute the derivative of this one with respect to z, exactly y, minus sinus z. So we have the derivative here. So the derivative for this one is going to be 4. The derivative for this one is going to be 625 times 2 is going to be minus 12 minus 1,250. And that's it. The derivative of this one with respect to z is going to be 2 because there's only one term. And then the derivative of this one with respect to x is going to be, of course, you have the derivative y minus, because you have the negative sign, e minus x, y. So this is very simple. It's going to be the opposite for y. Just, have, just the constant is going to be x. And then finally, with respect to z, it's going to be 20. And then if we want to evaluate this function with, res with, with respect to 1, 2, 3, we can do it, but we're going to do it in MATLAB. So let's move to the third example. So the third example, oh no, third example is this one. So this is the Jacobian already introduced here. So the, 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 the initial values were one, two, three. So I'm going to just run this one, one, two, three. And then if we want to obtain the Jacobian, the Jacobian, it was, it was actually, it's going to be three. The matrix is going to be three. And then we obtain the, the second term is going to be minus 0.8382. This third term of the first row is going to be minus 558. So minus 0.5588. And then the second line is going to be four, of course, four. And then we have this one, oops, we have minus 2,500, then we have a 2, and then we have the third line, the third road, it's minus 0 0.2707, the second term, is going to be minus 0.1353 and then 20. That's going to be the Jacobian matrix evaluated in the initial values. And if we evaluate the function in the initial values, so these functions, these functions in the initial values, these functions, we are going to obtain the following. So it's going to have this one, it's going to be a vector of point. 53.98, we will have a solution that is going to be, it's the second term is going to be minus 2,491. The third term is going to be equal to 69.5. So that's going to be the system that we are going to obtain in MATLAB. OK? So that's going to be your system. And then I'm just providing 10 iteration as well. And then I'm going to display at the end the numbers. So we run it. Boom. 
And then we obtained that the solution after after seven, no, no, seven, after nine iterations, we have a solution of 0 0.0462 and minus 4981, 0 0.4981. So please. Sustituyan estos tres valores de X, Y y Z en las ecuaciones. En estas ecuaciones iniciales. En estas. Este es X es igual a 0.8332, Y es igual a 0.0462 y Z es igual a menos 49.81. Profe. La primera ecuación me da, ah, bueno, a mí me da menos 3.99, por eso era menos 4. Correcto. Ok, okay La perfecto. Primera. La segunda. Otros que participen, por favor, para que no nos animemos. Rivaldo. Perla Saraí, Eva Yaret. La segunda parece que me da 1.87. 1.87, uy, eso es mucho. Eso es mucho, si no nos equivocamos. La segunda me da 2.535 por 10 a la menos 3. Eso suena mucho más razonable. No porque te, no porque te equivoques, Eva, no pasa nada. ¿eh? Aquí estamos para equivocarnos. Sí, tienes que seguir participando. ¿Y la tercera? Dos punto treinta y siete por diez de la menos cuatro. Perfect. So very good. So we see that this is the solution, the approximate solution is actually this one. So and we'll see how we use MATLAB to obtain practically the solutions using the same code that we have for the Gaussian elimination. We just use it for nonlinear and neutron graphs. Okay. So then. Just to, 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 to verify that we did things correctly. So we have here the solution. So those were the solutions here. And then the exercises for the class are going to be this ones and this ones. So these two, these two pages are for the exercises. So you will have three assignments already assigned in the, I'm gonna publish, I promise today all these three assignments today and I will give you three weeks to complete your assignments. Okay, so um, do you have any more question? Alguna pregunta antes de finalizar la clase? No, no. Okay, if you don't have any more questions, I'll see you next uh, Thursday for the for a new topic, okay? Probably we're gonna start actually looking for a finite difference or the numerical integration. So we'll see what comes first and I'll see you next class. Have a good day, guys. Igualmente, profe. Thank you very Hasta much. Luego, profe. Bye, Rivaldo. Ah, profe, profe, perdón.
Yes, Hello, Tengo una ah, duda. Ya, ya va a La tarea este, que no nos da valores iniciales para evaluarlo. If you don't have the if you don't have initial values, so you will have to plot this and find a initial um, a, a suitable initial value. Si no te los doy, tú tendrías prácticamente que encontrar prácticamente no. Ah, okay. ah, ok. Lo grafico, ¿Vale? grafico las dos funciones y exacto. Aquí Ajá, si te das cuenta okay. en, la, en la tarea si te dan la función. Mira, aquí te dice encontrar las primeras con estos valores aproximados. Pero hay unas que no, entonces tú tienes que darle como que ahí. Ah, vale. Ok, perfecto. Gracias. Dale. No problem. Bye bye, guys. Have a good day.